Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God for ever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and power. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisers, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? And they replied, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other God can save in this way. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him, and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel, and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, O king. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. 
In the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last seventy years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame, the men of Judah and people of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. O Lord, we and our kings, our princes and our fathers are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the word spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us great disaster. Put your spirit in me, Akadosh Baruch Hu. Keep me focused on the prize, yo. And the prize is not the reward. The prize is loving you. That's the prize, yo. Just being around you is my reward. Just getting to learn you. If somebody came, did God reward you with a house? With nah, nah. He gave me things, obviously. But you know what his biggest reward he gave me was? The words of the Torah. You know, it's amazing. Me and my father and one of his friends were sitting down eating lunch. And me and him love to talk Torah. So we were going back and forth, back and forth. For like 20 minutes straight. So my father goes to his friend. Eat, eat. So I said to my father, he is eating. He's eating words of the Torah. What could be better than that? What's going to nourish you and sate you better than that? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Listen to me. When I was younger, I didn't have peace in my heart, yo. Because I didn't have God. The minute I found God, I found peace in my heart, yo. Because God teaches you how to seek peace and pursue it. He teaches you how to put your ego low. May my soul be silent to all those who curse me. I just read it, yo. When I dive in this morning, yo. And when I dive in, I always make sure that before I pray, I'm focused, bro. So important, man. If you ask me what's the word of the day, focus, bro. Because when you focus, that's when you're going to get stuck to God, yo. When you live your life kind of just looking for pleasure and fun and just having a good time or chilling, you're not going to go nowhere, bro. You're not going to rise up. You're going to stay in your place. You understand? You might not even stay in your place. You might even get pulled down. You might get pulled back. And be careful, yo, hanging out with these demonic, wicked, anti-God people. You know why? Because eventually they're going to get depressed and an evil spirit will lay on them. And they're going to come and try to bring you down, yo. That's what these demons do, yo. They see a person happy, right away they're gonna come with a negative comment. Why? To destroy your peace. Don't don't even give them the opportunity, yo. And you know how you don't give them the opportunity? You stay away. I remember there were these wicked, wicked women. I used to know anti-God, yo, Jewish, God forbid, but that's what it was. And I used to talk, they're very Torah over there. And they didn't like it. So when I used to walk by, they used to give me these dirty, nasty looks. So I said to myself, you know what? When I used to go to this place I needed to go to, I could have went that way, which takes 10 seconds, or I could walk around the whole building to the other side. What do you think I did? I walked around the whole building. Why? Why? I should be able to walk there. Why? I have the right to walk there. It's 10 seconds. Why do I have to go around the way? What are they going to tell me what to do? Nah, that's not how you look at it. This is the way you look at it. 
They're evil and demonic. So their evil eye, even though it's going to ricochet off you and go back to them, you don't even want to take a chance. Be like Yaakov Avinu. He was nervous when he went to go see Esau. Why? He's the biggest Sadiq that ever lived, probably. Not that ever lived, but he top notch. That's it. Top of the list. Zell. How do I prove it? I'll prove it to you. He's, on the, he's underneath the Kisei HaKavod. There's four faces. A lion, an eagle, an ox, and the face of Jacob. That's why the angels were so confused when they were going up and down on the ladder. They didn't understand, yo. They seen this face in Shamayim, and now they went down to the earth, and they seen the same face. They got caught. They didn't realize it was the same person. It's one thing you need to know about angels, bro. It's deep. They don't know. They only know what God tells them and what you say. So if you don't say something, that's why it says, Don't open your mouth to the Satan. In other words, don't say things like, oh, I'm going to go study today real hard. Ah, the Satan right away will bring you a lot of distractions, yo, <laughs> to mess up that study. If you have the marriage, ah, Shavu, tell the Satan, sit in the corner and don't make a beep. But we got to be like Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu went to go meet Esau and he was scared. Why is he scared? Big Sadiq. Because he thought he might have some sin on him. You understand? And you need to think the same way. Don't think it's, oh yeah, let them give me the evil eye. It's going to ricochet off me and go back on the power. He might have a sin on you. That evil eye might get through. Walk around the building, my brother, yo. And I did, and I love it. I protected myself. I stayed away from the wicked. Do not connect with the wicked, bro. Trust me. And sometimes the wicked comes in the most beautiful face. It could be this gorgeous girl come and seduce you. And she's not going to seduce you right away. She'll be your friend. You'll be best friends. Everything will be good till your guard goes down. And when the guard goes down, that's when the Satan attacks. That's why you gotta be focused, my brother. I'm telling you, man, focus, bro. So let's focus on the beauty of God and how much we owe Him, right? Just for our heartbeat. Hashem, I'm thanking you right now for every single time my heart beated, beats now, and will beat. For that, I'm thanking you. For every breath I take. You know, what's that song? Every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you. That's God, you understand? He put you in this earth to fix what you need to fix, man. Don't waste that opportunity. Time is precious. Get the message. Maybe I'll name this video that. Nah, it's no joke, man. I love speaking the great Torah, yo. I love it, yo. It gives me a lot of... Life. That's why it says it's the tree of life. Hold on to it, yo. The more you study, the more humble you become. The more humble you become, the more holy you are. The more holy you are, the closer you get to God. Who gets to chill with God? Only the holy of the holies, you know what I mean? They can chill with God. Others don't have the merit to enter. And you know what? Hashem is so beautiful and so loving and so merciful. That if Hashem was in Shamayim teaching the biggest Sadiqim Torah and a guy came that was like on level one in Shamayim, you know, not on the seventh level, and he knocked on the door, can I come in? I don't know, maybe the angels will stop him. I don't know how it works up there, yo, but I have a feeling in my heart. <laughs> and Hashem would tell him to come in. <laughs> and tell him that he loves him. Sit up right in the front of the class, yo. Like that, yo. You gotta know who God is, bro. He just wants the love, yo. That's why he says, You think I wanna punish? No, he doesn't. He doesn't wanna punish, yo. But yet in the Torah, you're gonna see the Tochachot, the punishment. Yo, yo. The curses are vicious, yo. You eat the flesh of your flesh. You'll eat the fruit of your womb. You'll be married to a woman and another man will take her and sleep with her in front of you. Yo, yo. What kind of curses are these, bro? You'll be cursed in your basket, in your food basket, yo. Your food, your bread, your bread will be cursed, yo. You'll eat and you won't be sated, yo. You'll have all the food you want. You'll eat it, but you won't enjoy from it. Hashem has that ability, yo, to take away the pleasure. Just like he gives it, he can take it away, y'all. Cause it's bro, I gotta talk. I might cry like a little baby right now, yo. I gotta talk about my mother, cause it's bro. She's suffering, Hashem. I know you see. You're the one giving her the suffering. 
How classy is my mother, yo? Man, you're never gonna meet a lady classier than this, I promise you, bro. Doesn't talk bad about anybody. If she hears you talking like Shona Ra, even if you're hurt and she knows it's coming for your heart and you're telling her privately and you're not trying to like embarrass a person, she'll still tell you. Don't waste your time on this, yo. Let it go. Let it go. It's not worth it. You want to relive your health? I remember one time she said that to me. I was a kid. I was telling her what somebody did to me. So she said to me, why are you talking about it? I said, well, you don't care about me? You don't want to hear it? So she goes, of course I care about you. I love you. She put her arm around me. She said, don't relive your hell, yo. Let it go, bro. That's where I got that saying that I say from. It's really from God. But it was inspired from my mother, yo. Put your ego low. Let it go. And know that God is on the show, bro. Don't relive your hell, yo. Don't talk about it, bro. Move on. This, I remember one time somebody was so rude to me, yo. And my mother was right there. So the dude slammed the door in my face and he walked away. So I looked at my mother like I wanted to run after him to make my point. So my mother goes, he just did you a favor, bro. Let him go. Let him go. What do you want to do? You want to chase after him and make your point and get into another argument with him? What, you don't see? You don't see that it's not a good person, bro. He's disrespecting you. What, you don't see? If you want to serve God, the best way to serve him is in peace. That's why when Hashem came to Elijah, he came in peace. He came in a whisper. He didn't come through a monsoon and fire and none of that, yo. Came in peace. So you're going to tell me, so why didn't he come like that to the Jews when he gave the Torah? You know why? Because that's why. You get it? The foundation of wisdom is to fear God. Hashem wanted you to get the point that although he loves you and he wants you just to be good and to have peace and to bless you he lets you know that if you're ungrateful and rude and arrogant and smug he's gonna really punish you bad yo it's unbelievable how the world is set up in such a way that the evil and the wicked can manipulate the truth they can lie they could deceive, they could say things that could mess a person up and trick him like they do with little kids, yo. Why do you think they so want to expose these kids to transgenderism? Why? Because they know they're vulnerable, you understand? They don't come after no 30-year-old woman and try to convince her to be a man. Nah, <laughs> they come after a little 11-year-old girl, yo, that's going through problems in her life, yo. And they'll expose that, yo. That's how demonic these Democrats are, yo. Don't ever get it twisted when you hear them talking about God and you hear them saying this, and we love kindness and peace, and that's all lies, bro. If they love kindness and peace, they wouldn't advocate for getting abortions in the ninth month. And they'll tell you, oh, no, no, but nobody does it. So then why did you put it into law, you clown? Get out of here, man. You people are so evil, bro. You just got to look. Not even in between the lines. Today they show you in your face, like the kids today. They commit crimes and videotape it. So how dumb can you be? Maybe today the cops are not like what they used to be, so they don't fear the cops, obviously. But we all know in the end, even the most wicked person ends up in jail. Hashem set it up like this, yo. Think about it. Just like everybody gets, you know, buried, yo. Most people will get buried. Why? Because there's going to be resurrection of the dead already. Hashem put it in the world like that, yo. I remember this one atheist Jew. <laughs> he was telling me how he wanted to get cremated. So I said to him, are you crazy, yo? You're going to put your soul in a place of eternal unrest. Don't do that, yo. It's like somebody who commits suicide. You know what's so sad about that, yo? Is that after he commits suicide, he doesn't get a chance to go up to Shemayim to get judged. Because now he cut his life short. So he wasn't able to fulfill his mission. So now he gets placed in a state of limbo. And that could be for 7 trillion years, yo. And to the soul, in that moment, it feels like a billion years because when you're there, you're not attached to time. So one second and one billion seconds is the same exact second and that's deep. So when you're in Gehenom, you're in it fully. Make a turn, bro. Oh, I'm going to tell you something so deep right now because I was thinking right and left and I shouldn't put this in my mind. I studied this the other day, yo. I love the way 
I study things and I just, they're not even on my mind. And then I'll say a word and it will connect to that. And then I'll say, yeah, that's dope. It's from God, yo. Appreciate you for that. I'll cut the off. I got to see how I could say this in a clean way, yo. When you go to the restroom to relieve yourself, don't wipe with your right hand, yo. I'll just say it like that. But while I'm on this topic, I cut this I got to say it. I'm going to say it this one time, maybe another time, but... Let me just teach the world how it goes, bro. Listen, man. When you go to the restroom to relieve yourself, make sure when you sit, you put your feet up. They have a thing that's called squatty potty. Go look at that. So when you put your feet up, it allows you to go to the bathroom in a better way. Look at the Chinese, how they go. The Japanese, they squat. Why do they squat? Because they know that the way the body is set up, that's the best way to relieve yourself. And the Chinese are smart when it comes to medicine. You know why? Because they come from Avram Avinu, yo. That's why it says that he sent his children and they studied medicine. Sin, the Chinese. Ironic that their name is Sin. Because they don't have souls, a lot of them, yo. That's why they eat animals while they're alive, yo. They don't keep the seven laws of Noah, yo. And we'll get to the seven laws of Noah, God willing, later. Because I could talk about that for a minute. By the way, if you're not Jewish and you're listening to this right now... I have to tell you and give you a warning that you should not listen. Now, maybe today it's an exception to the rule. I'm just telling you from what it was back in the day. You know why a non-Jew is not allowed to listen to the Debate Torah? I mean, if you talk in general, you know, about things that the whole world is involved in the Torah, fine. But I'm talking about secrets in Judaism. Like if I tell you a secret about Sukkot, Shavuot, Pesach, something like that. Even what I told you with the right hand. That's a secret from the Torah. You know why? They're not circumcised The uncircumcised Will not partake In my Torah So if you're listening to this And you're not Jewish And you're really connected To my word Like you want to hear What I'm going to talk about And you want to learn Then I'm letting you know Convert to Judaism bro And then you can Really learn You know what I mean Shem will open up your mind Deep So let me explain this to you yo When you go I told you, right? Lift your feet up. Now, after you do that, don't wipe, bro. Do not, yo, I want to get this through your head, yo. Only use toilet paper to blow your nose, bro. For nothing else, bro. You don't don't care how soft it is. You're going to keep rubbing it over there. It's going to damage your skin. People, God forbid, get hemorrhoids like this, bro. You got to be majorly careful with that. So you just step into the shower, bro, and just clean yourself, bro. It's that simple, man. Back to my mother, yo. I see my mother suffering a lot towards the end of her life, yo. Hashem got it in her mind that she's confused. Sometimes she doesn't know where she lives. I want to go home. I want to go. But mommy, you're home. No, I'm not home. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, I'm not. She's convinced that she's not at home. So where do you want to go? And she gives the address where she's living. So that's how confused she gets sometimes. Sometimes she's good. Sometimes she's not. So Hashem gave me this punishment, yo. Sometimes in the middle of the night, she'll come knock on my door. I'll open the door and say, what's wrong, mommy? She'll say, where's my mom? Where's my mommy? Where's Rachma? My mother died like 30 years ago, bro. Get the point, man? It's sad, bro, but this is what it is, yo. That's sad, man. That really is sad. Because it's broken. So I see my mom suffering like that, yo. And she was like <laughs> the best lady you'll ever meet. Modest, kind, Sweet to this day, never heard her even utter a curse. This right here is for my mother, yo, because I love her. My mother, first of all, is gorgeous, yo, beautiful. I should blessed her to be a pretty lady, but that's not what I want to come here and talk about. Not her physical beauty, her spiritual beauty, yo. All the advice she gave me in my life, and now I see her older, suffering a little bit, and it hurts, man. And sometimes I see her going through a lot of pain And she'll tell me how merciful God is While she's like half dying And I'm thinking to myself What mercy you're getting punished But even during her punishment Because every punishment is from a sin bro Don't ever get that twisted I'm telling you my mother is an angel But when it came to Shabbat She never kept it bro Now she came from Sudan She learned in a Masadra She'll probably get tons of discounts yo But the truth is she had enough knowledge and wisdom to know that she should have kept Shabbat. There was something blocking her from keeping Shabbat. And I kept telling her that later on in life, Hashem might come and give you some suffering for that. 
to clean you so he can bring you right next to him in heaven. See, when you see beautiful people suffer when they get older, like my Uncle Joe, may he rest in peace, yo. Yo, this dude hardly talked. When he spoke, he was always funny. He was loving. He was kind. I remember I used to beg my father. I know he's in heaven listening to this right now. And he'll attest to this, bro. I used to beg my father to go stay at his house because he had a son named Adam, my cousin who I love. And but he was always giving his wife, Barbara, they were so nice to me, man. Always greeted me with a smile. They were always loving and kind. And I appreciate that a lot, yo. And I just want them to know that, yo. And today I don't really speak to them because, you know, I feel like they're like not into Torah. They're, I don't want to say, God forbid, anti-God. I can't say, I don't know. I'm afraid they are. But more atheist, you know what I mean? I just don't connect to them spiritually, you know what I'm saying? So I'm very intense with mine. So when you're around me, I'm going to talk about God. I'm going to talk about life. And I don't think they're into that, you know what I mean? So I'm not as close with them as I used to be. But don't ever get it twisted, yo. I appreciate everything they did for me, yo. And how nice they treated me and the love that they gave me. Amen. So my Uncle Joe, yo, he suffered a lot, yo. A lot, a lot, a lot. For what? For sins he had. I don't know. That was between him and God, bro. But the point I'm trying to make is that the suffering is cleaning the sins. Why? Because Hashem wants you next to him when you die. That's why. You understand? Because if you're coming to Shammai and filled with sins, how are you going to be next to him? You can't. He's too holy. He's too holy. You try to come near him, you'll faint from the holiness. You won't be able to withstand it. So you wouldn't even be able to hang out with him, you understand? So my mother's like this, she's going through it, yo. And it's got to be for Shabbat, there's nothing else, there's nothing else. And even with Shabbat, she's good, yo. She wasn't anti-Shabbat, she used to cook for us. She used to keep Shabbat when she was on, just in the, you know, in her bedroom. She would like, you know, smoke her cigarettes and watch TV. Can't believe my mother used to smoke cigarettes, bro. How disgusting of a habit. You're too classy of a lady to smoke. And I remember one day she just stopped out of nowhere. And I said to her, how did you stop? So she goes to me, I just realized, just like I could pick up the cigarette, put it in my mouth, inhale it, and damage my lungs, I can also take that same cigarette, put it back in the ashtray, and leave it there forever, and know it's my enemy. That's the wisdom of my mother, you understand? There's people today, God forbid, struggling to stop smoking for 30 years, dying. And they still smoke. And look at how my mom handled that, yo. With wisdom and knowledge. Blessed by God, yo. She respected Shabbat. I'll give you the best proof. When I started to keep Shabbat, and it was a struggle in the beginning. You think I kept Shabbat overnight? <laughs> Took me like a year and a half. Easy till I didn't need the TV. Easy a year and a half, yo. I remember I used to leave forensic files on. Didn't touch the TV, but just left that on all Shabbat and just slept. Just made sure not to mechalel, you know? Just not to desecrate it, yo. And you think Hashem was mad at me? Nah, Hashem loved it, yo. He knew I had to take, you know, I had to crawl before I walked, yo. And that's what I did. You see, a lot of people rush into Shabbat right away and end up falling, yo. And that's scary, yo. So I wanted to make sure that my foundation was solid, yo. So when I started to really keep Shabbat, and she saw, you know, I stopped driving to the beach on Shabbat. I stopped this, I stopped that. You know, as a young secular kid, she saw I was like trying to like really change. <laughs> she said, good for you, yo. Good for you, may God help you. It's going to be good for you. God will bless you for it. So I remember thinking to myself, so why don't you keep it, yo? So it's just hard for her, yo. For her, it's really the TV. For her, sometimes maybe she, I don't know. That's between her and God, yo. But the bottom line is... That's probably what the suffering she's getting now is from. So she's going through it really bad this one day. And I remember she looked at me. And she goes, God is so merciful. And I'm thinking to myself, look at how she's suffering. And she was like the nicest lady. So I thought, just imagine how the wicked are going to suffer. If this is her end, imagine what their end is going to be. And that brought a smile to my face, yo. And another thing about my mother that I love, she never yells, she never gets upset. But now that she goes through some suffering, she gets a little frustrated. She gets confused, that's what it is. She has the beginning of like dementia. So she's good a lot of the times, but you know, she definitely goes through it every day. She has little episodes where 
She doesn't know where she lives. She's looking for her mother. Like, she'll come in my room at like 2 o'clock in the morning, yo. Knock on the door. I'll open What's wrong, ma? She says, where's Rachma? She's looking for her mother. So I don't want to tell her her mother's dead, yo. You know what I mean? So I just tell her, oh, no, she's in Israel. We're going to go there tomorrow. You know, I lie to her for the sake of peace. It's a great proof that you could lie, yo. And sometimes I don't lie to her, you know, because we have like this lock on the door that she doesn't get out of the house because sometimes she'll just, she thinks it's so ill how it works, bro. She'll think she's 100% fine and she'll try to like go do the laundry and she'll end up in the next building <laughs> and not know where she is, man. It's crazy. So they put a lock on the door that she can't get out. So one day she came to me and she said, what's this lock for? So I sat her down and, I, and this is while she was going through it. So I sat her down and I said to her, mommy, listen, I said, sometimes you leave the house and you forget where you are. And then you get lost, you know, so we get nervous and, you know, we just make sure to lock it. But I said, if you ever need to leave, just tell me I have the key and we can let you out. So, you know, sometimes she gets frustrated and sometimes she's like, okay, I want to go. So I'll just take her out for a walk. Yo, she doesn't sleep, yo. I've never seen because she's confused. She's like nervous. She doesn't know where she is. She's looking for a place. That's the, one of the biggest punishments. I've ever seen, man. You could have pain in your hip. You're this, you're that. Go through physical pain. It'll never be as bad as this, yo. Because at least with all that, you can take a painkiller and get some peace here. There's no remedy for it, bro. You're confused. You don't know what's going on. You're nervous. You're in a state of panic and anxiety. She goes through that, yo. It's very scary to see it, yo. So she'll be up for like nine hours in the middle of the night. Like looking for her mom, doing this, she'll call my sister like 50 times in like 20 minutes. Are you coming over? Are you coming? And my sister will tell you, yeah, I'll be there in an hour. Are you coming over? Are you? She'll just keep calling and calling. So one time I decided to take her with me to do the laundry, right? Because I know she like likes to do the laundry. So I said, mommy, you want to come? Or she goes, yeah, yeah, come. So I took her. What a mistake. I'll tell you why. Because after we finished the laundry and we brought it up, the minute we got up, she goes, I got to go downstairs. I go, why? She goes, I have to get the laundry. I said, no, mommy, here's the laundry right here. She goes, that's not the laundry. We got to go downstairs and get the laundry. So I was like, okay. So I took her downstairs. We go downstairs. There's like two people there, the maintenance guy. And she's looking inside the washing machine and the dryers to see if she sees our clothes. So I said, mommy, the clothes are not here. We took them upstairs. She's like, okay. So we go upstairs. The, again, the minute we get in, Where's the laundry? I gotta go get the laundry. I'm like, no, no, mommy, you just got the laundry. It's right here. No, 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 what, you're lying to me. That's not the laundry. We need to get the laundry now. I'm gonna go ask the maintenance guy. <laughs> I'm gonna ask the maintenance guy. I'm telling you, here's the laundry. No, no, I need the laundry. So I'll take her again. I think this happened like four times, yo. Maybe three. I forgot exactly, yo. But bottom line is, that's kind of like how it goes sometimes. So you have to be very patient. It's hard. Sometimes I'll, I'll lose my patience a little bit. I don't yell at her, God forbid. But, you know, I get frustrated. So I remember one time she asked me to take her for a walk, and I said no. So she said, why? So I said, because I don't feel it in my heart, yo. I don't want to go take you for a walk, and I'm miserable, and I'm like, you know, like walking around with you because I'm not in the mood to do it. You know, it was one day that, that she was getting me frustrated, and I lost patience. Like I said, didn't get mad, don't yell at her, whatever, but... I, and so she, I sat her down and I said to her, I said, no, she goes, I understand. I said, no, I want you to really understand. I said, I do it like I do it with God, yo. If I don't feel, if I'm upset about something, God forbid, which I'm usually never, but if I'm frustrated or something's on my mind or I can't focus, I won't pray. I won't pray that's disrespecting God. And I said, it would disrespect you if I would take you downstairs and act like it's a burden, you understand? So she's like, I appreciate that. And I was like, yeah. And then 20 minutes later, I took her. But I just wanted you to learn that lesson. Betul levav, yo. When you're going to help your mother, always do it with a pure heart, yo. Always do it with a pure heart, bro. I see people sometimes, you know, with their parents helping them, but they do it with a sour face. You can see it's such a burden and there's silence and there's awkwardness. It's just not a good look, bro. Not a good look, yo. And my mother's been going through this for a couple of years now. Akadosh Baruch I'm begging you. Please, Hashem, it's okay, Akadosh Baruch Either fix her and let her live, or take her and let her have peace, Hashem. 
please, I could horrible. I can't stand to see her suffer like that anymore. She's such a good person, I said. I want to tell you a story about her sister, Vivi. I, I think my mom is like an angel, and she thinks her sister, Vivi, is like an angel. So you can imagine how kind, sweet, humble, nice, and loving Vivi is. So let me tell you a story about Vivi. When I was a kid, every time she used to see me, God blessed her with a lot of money, yo. So every time I used to see her when I was young, she would slip me a hundred bucks. So one time I seen her at a wedding. I was probably like 16 years old. She came up to me. She gave me 300 bucks. So my mother saw. So my mother ran over and said, what's this? She said, I'm giving him a gift. My mother said, no, he's not taking your money. Please don't give him money. So she took the money and gave it back to her. So I sat there kind of confused because I was my mom was acting like weird. So I, I didn't want to disrespect my mom. So I let it go. I didn't say a word. So Vivi, what do you think Vivi did? Do you think she got mad? Don't tell me what to do. I'm going to give him the money regardless. Oh, nah. She said, okay, no problem. I understand how you feel. And she walked away. That's her sisters. And she walked away. So later on in the night, I seen her. She came up to me and gave me 500. And she said, don't tell your mom. <laughs> That's Vivi, yo. She just always wanted to see you. With a smile on your face, yo. She just loved to help. You should have seen her mother, my grandmother, Rachma, went through the same thing my mother's going through. And she had a lot of kids, yo. I'll name you all of them right now. There's Ayet. There's Avram, who I love more than anything except for my mother and God. There's Zeki, who I respect because he never gets angry. There's Musa, who died young. And I say Asher Yatsar and his merit every time I go to the restroom or to the bathroom. And you have Vivi. And who else am I missing? That's it. So you have Avram, Vivi, Jack, my yeah. uncle Jack. A Kurdish bar who I don't know if Jack is in heaven right now. I'm assuming he is. Because he lost a child. That's a really vicious punishment, yo. That will really clean a lot, a lot, a lot of sins. So I think, I think he is in heaven. But he was a little tough, yo. You know what I mean? Married Goyoti. Left the religion. Yeah, it wasn't so close to God. Let's put it like that, yo. But hopefully, he could share in some of the merit of my Torah and that will help him. I like Jack. He always, man, if you want to know charming, yo, never gonna meet and rich. Forget about rich. Bro, he was so rich. He owned his own block, bro. I'll never forget, yo. We went to London. And he's like, I own every store on this block, on both sides. I said, I don't normal, yo, a mattress store, a bakery, or this, or that. He goes, yeah. And he goes, what do you want? You want something? Everywhere I wanted. That whole block, yo, any store I wanted something from, I just walk in and I could get it. Like that, yo, he was so generous. Yo, 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 he was like on another level, yo. And his house was so dope. Everything in gold, everything, everything. It would look like, yo, like a palace, yo. And he had an indoor swimming pool, salt water. Like, who has that, yo? So you're talking about the rich and the rich. Like, to get to his house, there was like a windy road to go up like this hill. It was probably like a mile. I don't even think I'm exaggerating, yo. <laughs> to Just to get to his property. And then, of course, you get to the gate. It's like 20 feet high. There's an intercom. Just like you see in the movies, yo. Had a lot of wealth in his life, yo. And then when he lost his daughter, yo, with all that money, he couldn't find no happiness. That's why we said he passed away from a sad heart, yo. Like his heart just stopped working, yo. I love you, Jack, and I hope and pray to God that you're in a beautiful place. And if you are, come to me in a dream dressed in all white, and I'll know. So, my grandmother had a lot of children yo and you know who took care of her the best Vivi stayed with her in the nursing home every single day because she got to the point where she couldn't live in a crib bro there was no way she could live in a normal world and function she was really bad with dementia like really really bad so Vivi went there used to feed. she couldn't even eat yo she used to feed her bathe her Ah, oh, man, she used to cook her food because, you know, the food in the nursing home was horrible. Yo, Vivi, 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 yo. Dear God. Please help me to be like Vivi. I could have 
that you have that love in my heart. And I do thank God you're compassionate. I love to help you. But Vivi was just like kindness on steroids, bro. I don't know how to explain it, yo. And always did it with a smile on her face, yo. That's what impressed me about Vivi, yo. The tube leva, bro. If she saw, I remember one time I was sad about something when I was a kid and how she came up to me, put her arm around me. I was like, what's wrong? And the way she said it, you could see in her eyes, yo, like she will cry for you, yo. Ah, Vivi, I love you a lot, yo. And thank God she's alive, yo. And they told me that she's also going through the beginning of dementia, like my mother a little bit. Ah, so sad, yo. Here you have two giant Jewish women suffering. Ask yourself, imagine what your end is going to be like. Think about what I'm telling you, bro. You know, I could really let the tears flow, bro, but I don't... I hold back a little bit. Some of my old videos, I really let them flow. But I try to hold them back a little bit because I feel like some people are like... You know, don't understand the depth of the emotion, yo. But maybe I'll open it up again. The bottom line is this, yo. My mother and Vivi are two of the most beautiful women you'll ever meet in the world, yo. And they both didn't keep Shabbat. But their midot is better than anybody that I know that keeps Shabbat. And I know a few big rabbis. And they're not even half the level of these two women when it comes to me though not even close bro not even close bro like my mother says a humble person never gets insulted yo leave it at that yo leave it at that let that lay yo let that marinate in your brain for a little bit and when it marinates in the brain it'll seep into the heart yo and then it will really teach you to fall back and let God fight your battles you know what I mean Yo, if you're a kind of person that you're loving and kind always, you'll have no enemies, yo. Yeah, you might have somebody that's jealous of you and they'll try to start with you, but you'll just ignore them. Or the people around you will tell them, yo, you're nasty. Why are you doing that? Yeah, they'll protect you. Uh, look at that lesson, bro. Humbleness and kindness will get you loved by everybody, yo. Remember that, yo. And I got to work on that more, yo. Sometimes people get me frustrated, so I just separate from them, you know what I mean? And that's good, but I get a little frustrated sometimes. I said, just try to be like a prophet. A real prophet had to have peace to talk to God. You couldn't even be in a state of being upset or sad or mad or even a little frustrated. None of that, yo. So may I have the merit to be like that, yo. Even when you see injustice and you want to bang on the table and yell and scream and go nuts, don't show that you disprove by what's going on. Make a comment. Let the world know. No problem. Always say what you want to say in a classy way. Bless me with that. I can just draw me. When you get mad, you fail. Even if you're a billion percent. Keep that in my mind. Focus for eternity. Forever I can just draw me. When you complain too much, you look like the problem. <laughs> These are some of the sayings that my mother gave me, yo. What else, yo? When your mouth is closed, you can't get in trouble. I like that. The definition of being nice is being nice to somebody who's not nice to you. <laughs> that is one of her best sayings ever, yo. Think about what I just said. Because it's easy to be nice to people that are nice to you. Now go be nice to somebody who's not being so nice to you. Then that's the real definition of being nice. We're not saying being nice to somebody who wants to murder you, obviously. We said not nice, you know. They're having a bad day, so they're rude. Like I always say, yo, no excuse to be rude. Whatever you're going through in your life, yo, don't take it out on others. It's not their fault, yo. That's not fair to them. Right? You're complaining that what you're going through is not fair and you're doing the same thing to them. Don't do that, yo. And believe me, what's happening to you is fair. Because the punishment you got is from God. Small or large. 
it's all from God, bro. Get it to your head, yo. Get it to your head. The, the day the Jews get it to their head, and we do. There's a lot of us that do, thank God. I do, and I know a lot that do, but there's a lot that don't, you know what I mean? We were talking about that the other day. We were assessing the state of B'nai Israel, me and a friend of mine. We said 50%. Is anti God and the other 50 will probably die for him, yo. Because they love him. They want to be with him. And being Jewish is such a blessing, yo. And you're going to tell me why the nations hate you. They do. Because. Who cares what the nations think? We only care what the maker of the world thinks. And if the maker of the world chose me, Amongst all the nations To be his most beloved Then I'm gonna want And thank him for that yo No matter what you gotta say You know what I mean But the, you know The non-Jews that are real They recognize They know what time it is When they see a real Jew They appreciate it Just like when I see a real Righteous Gentile It just warms my heart yo I say why can't some of the Jews be like that Word Love you, Hashem.